Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a warm-up story about the relationship between an ex-married couple. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. What day did you get married again? My ex got married a couple years ago, we're still in touch because of the kids, to the woman he started seeing when we were still together. I've had to see and talk to her a lot over the years, but after she decided to verbally attack me a month before their wedding, I've avoided her. She made it clear that she hates me beyond reason. I feel no need to continue being nice to her, but will just avoid her rather than being rude in return. Their anniversary is November 1st. I wish them a happy anniversary on Halloween instead. It's the small things. Misspell her name as well. That really triggers those people. And our second story. I had to teach my boss that even though she's my boss, I'm not her secretary. I have a good boss, but sometimes you have to teach them a thing or two. My boss is becoming the B from micromanaging hell, where I used to be able to do my job, I can no longer do it without constant interruptions of micromanagement. Boss has office near mine, if I handle a business call, she listens and tries to control the call from her office. It's impossible for people to do more than one thing at a time. I can't listen to two people at a time when one is on the phone. One conversation depends on verbal skills only, and the other is messed up trying to use verbal and nonverbal. The customer should be served, not the boss. I sort of dealt with this pretty well and clever. When I'm on the phone with someone and eavesdropping boss starts trying to control a simple phone call with, no, don't do that. Do blank. Who is that? Ask them blank. Tell them blank. I become polite, cover the phone, and say to my boss, I have this handled. If boss persists with the micromanagement, if boss persists with the micromanagement crap, I then cover the phone and say, Mr. Customer, can you please hold a moment? It's too loud and busy here to understand your needs. If it's okay with you, I'm going to transfer you to my boss at the private office. Boss then says, no, can't you see I don't have time for that call? I transfer the call that moment and walk away. Boss handles call, which they wanted to do in the first place. Next time boss interrupts me on a call, I cover the phone, say, can you hold one second, and politely ask boss, do you want this one? Look at boss and wait till their attention goes back to the desk when I then handle the call. Now that I've broken that mind-numbing habit, boss has moved to different interruptions to my workflow. He's clever, but I'm more so. Can you copy files from XXX and scan them to me? Over and over, I hear this. Now you do things for your boss when they run their own small business on company time. They tend to take you on as an unwilling partner, asking you to do things they don't have time for. But then you don't have time for your job. Most of our documents are PDF and our company will not provide us the ability to edit stuff. So when I can't get the job done, I wait till boss wants a document scanned to them I wait for a one-pager that I know they want to use electronically. I retrieve the file. 50% of the time, it's in boss's office. I pull the page they want, then I scan the damn thing. But the end of the document goes in scanner first, so the document will go to boss upside down and not usable by them. I then announce I'm going on break. Would you please return the document to the file? They get the file they can't use, and I'm not there for them to ask me to rescan. Bonus revenge. Boss has to go to Scanner to rescan his document. Once he handles it, he's obligated by company culture to return it to the file, so I comply with his micromanagement demands, and he ends up doing what he should have done in the first place. This is called managing up, and is a basic office survival skill that only a few people seem to have. And our last story. So what if I didn't make my payments? You owe me now. This happened about five years ago. I had a 2005 Ford Focus that was basically just sitting. It ran fine, but had a large dent on the right passenger's fender. I listed it for sale for only a few thousand. I don't remember the exact price, just that it was well below KBB. I get a few bites and a couple people come look at the car. One guy, a few years younger than me, 30 at the time, and his wife and newborn come and seem really nice. He'd just come from work and was dirty, so appeared to be a hard worker. They really liked the car, but were about $1,500 short or so and said they would try to save up and hope it's still for sale because it's hard to find a good car at this price, etc., etc. 
I remembered about a decade earlier, someone really helped me out in a similar situation and let me pay half up front and make payments. This literally allowed me to keep my job as I had no other options at the time and was sold a lemon just prior. I decided it was time to pay it forward. I knew I was taking a risk and wasn't naive. I am very familiar with writing contracts and how the lien holder process works, so I offered to take a little less than what they had on them up front and accept payments for the rest of the balance so they could pick up a car seat and some other things because it was clear they were struggling a little. We discuss what they can afford and work up the paperwork and even get it notarized by my neighbor who happened to be a notary. The understanding was that they would make small bi-weekly payments of a set amount on each Friday every other week, and if payments were missed, the vehicle would be returned to me and they would forfeit what they'd paid so far, or I could demand payment in full. If I had to repossess the vehicle, they would be responsible for any costs incurred. Things go well for about a month or two, then the something came up, didn't get paid this week, had to take time off for the baby stuff started. I even offered opportunities to work some of the payments off with odd stuff around the house and yard, and they started ignoring my texts and calls. After about two months goes by, I finally messaged saying, if I don't have all the behind payments by Friday, I'll take steps to repossess the vehicle. The husband immediately calls me with attitude. Why are you being such a B? You'll get your payment. I've been upgrading and repairing the defective car you sold me, which is a favor to you. Me. The car wasn't defective in any way, and if you got money to upgrade it, then you have money to make your payments. CB, I'll get you some money when I can. You have no right to demand it now, so you can either accept what I can give you when I can, or you won't get crap. Me, actually, I more than have the right per the contract you sign, and if you don't pay, I'll simply take the vehicle back. CB, well, you didn't put a final due date on the contract, so you can't enforce anything. Me. The terms of the contract are very clear. There was no need for a final due date because the payment structure was clearly laid out, as were the number of payments, consequences of missing, or late payments. CB. Look, I helped you out by taking this piece of crap off your hands, and I've had to fix all kinds of things with it for you. So maybe you should think about that before making your demands. Who else would fix a car up for you? He said this as if he was fixing a car up for my use. Me. What are you even talking about? The car was running just fine when you bought it. CB. What about that huge dent? I've dumped so much money into fixing it, you owe me at this point. Me. If you've repaired that dent, that's your choice, but it has nothing to do with me. CB. You think because you're some rich B? I am and was far from rich. In fact, I'm a single mom taking care of two girls with no degree, lol. You can look down on us and try to make us do slave labor for you? I assume he was referring to my offers to let him work some of the balance off? I should effing sue you! He hangs up and refuses to answer when I call or text back. I wait until that Thursday and message that I'd be taking the car back. CB messages back saying, You're going to spend more than it's worth on a repo guy to come get it, so stop being a B and just write off the balance since I've helped you by fixing it up. I let him know I'd be there tomorrow with my spare key and the police if they tried to just avoid it. I let him know that I'd be there tomorrow with my spare key and the police and if they tried to just avoid it, I'd have no choice but to attempt to collect at his place of employment since he wore his work uniform to my house previously. A little bit of a bluff on my part. Then I head to my boyfriend at the times for the night. The next morning I come home to a car parked in the middle of my front yard, parked diagonal with the driver's side door wide open keys thrown on the ground next to it, the fenders, really whole front side panels have been replaced, very poorly, with front slash side panels from some completely different car. They were red and didn't fit with the rest of the body of the car at all. The car was white. The car had some hideous park bench looking spoiler on it now, and he'd done something with the exhaust system that made it sound really crappy and loud. The stock radio had been replaced with some aftermarket CD player. There was nothing wrong with the stock, but there were wires all over the place and a huge gap in the housing spot with some plastic bits wedged in to hold it still. The interior smelled like cigarettes and butt. The next part's gonna sound like I'm making it up. There was a note on the dash explaining how heartless I was and that now he'll probably not be able to feed his baby because of me and that if I didn't reimburse him for the payments he made along with all the repairs, He'd sue me because people like me can't get away with taking advantage of poor families like his, 
and that he was not afraid to hold me accountable, but he would give me one chance if I returned the car to him along with a small payment to cover the cost of his having to find other transportation in the meantime. I took it as a loss and just listed it for $800. The balance was around $1,200, but with how he effed it up, I knew I couldn't get that much, so I sold it at a junk price. It sold almost immediately, but I got a text from the guy when I listed it asking me if I would please give it to him since he already paid me more than the price I was now listing it for, and that he would even consider paying me a small amount if I would be willing to take payments. I told him that I couldn't because I was recently told that I was going to be sued, so I needed to save up to prepare for that, lol. Should have sent him a new bill asking for repairs for the repair work he'd done to the car. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.